In this video, I'd like to discuss what's the difference between prime and composite. In the previous video, we saw pictures of what looked like a prime number. Now, let me take a look at this example. Um, let's take a look at the number 3. Because you're going to take numbers and it's either going to go in the prime group or the composite group. It's not going to go in both. It's either or. If we take a look at the number 3, um, let's see here. What can I multiply to get 3? I can multiply 1 times 3. Anything else? Nope. Remember, I'm going to draw that. I'm going to put this in my prime because that's the only picture I can get is a 1 by 3. Okay, let's take a look at, so, 3 is prime. Um, we already took a look at 6, we took a look at 7, we took a look at 9. Let's take a look at 12. I can say 12 is 1 times 12. Uh, 1 times 12, 2 times... 2 times 6, 3, 3 times 4, and I already have my 4, so I have all my factors for 12. How many squares am I going to have, or how many rectangles am I going to have, I should say? I can have 1, 2, 3. So 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 is just one way to draw a picture of 12. And this goes in my composite group. It's one of the three ways to draw 12. I can do a 2 by 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And I can do a 3 by 4. I did a 3 by 4 here, which is 3 by 4. I did a 2 by 6. I don't think I have 12 going across. Or I can do a 1 by 12, which would extend all the way down here. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, which would be a 1 by 12. Okay. I have three different pictures. It's composite. When I have one picture, it's prime. The easiest way to go through that, uh, let's try 19. I'm going to start with 1 times 19, 2 times what is 19, nothing, 3 times what is 19, nothing, 4 times what is 19, nothing, 5, 6, 19 can't be divided by 7, can't be divided by 8, 9, and all the way up to 19. The only one I'm going to have, the only factor set I'm going to have is 1 times 19. So therefore, it is prime. Let's take a look at, use a different color here, 28. I always start off with 1 times itself. If it's 1 times itself, it's prime. If it has more factors, it's composite. So, can 28 divide by, be divided by 2? Sure. 28 times 14. What would be my next one? Think about it. 28 divided by 3. By 4. 
four times seven is twenty-eight. Five, no, it doesn't have a zero at the end, or five. Six, twenty-eight divided by six. Seven, I already have seven, so I already have all my factors. It has more than one set of factors, so it's composite. Okay, uh, let's take a look at 11. I always start off with 1. 1 times 11. 2 times what equals 11? 3 times what equals 11? Hmm. I can't think of any other factors. Can you think of any other factors? I know I can't. Since there's only one set of factors, it's prime. Now, that we did this, we have two numbers in this world, out of all the numbers in the world up to infinity, that is neither prime or composite. Now, a lot of teachers will tell you, if it's not prime, then it's composite. Okay, if, like I just said, if you have one set, it's prime. If you have more than one set of factors, it's composite. There's an exception to the rule. Two numbers are going to be neither prime nor composite. Just like in English class, you have exceptions to every rule. All the same with math. The numbers 0 and 1. Neither prime nor composite. They're just 0. And they're just one. So don't get tricked. That could be a bonus question on a test. Okay, you have to remember those exceptions. Let's get into prime factorization. Or factor trees. I like factor trees. They're kind of cool. Number 36. Factor trees, the whole purpose of factor trees is to break the number down so when you're done you have all the prime numbers when multiplied together that will give you 36. You're looking for all the prime numbers that will give you 36 when multiplied together. Give me two numbers, any two numbers. Um, 36. 6 times 6. Easiest two numbers to remember. 6 times 6 equals 36. It doesn't matter which ones you start off with because you're always going to get the same answer. Okay. Uh, now we need to break down these numbers. Let's break down 6 times 6. Well, 2 times 3. I'll use the same one over here. 2 times 3. Now, when breaking these down, you have to remember you cannot I meant to put that as a star. You cannot use 1. Sorry, can't do it. Because 1 times itself is all you, you You just, you can't do it in a factor tree. Can I break down 2? Only if I use 1 and 2, and I just told you, do not use 1. Can I break down 3? Only if I use 1 times 3. Can I break down 2? Can I break down 3? This here is my fa prime factorization. How do I write that as an answer? I have 2. How many 2's do I have? I have 2 2's times I have a 3. How many 3's do I have? Okay, That is your prime factorization. Okay. Let's do another one. I like these. These are fun. Let's do a tougher one. Let's do 54. I draw my partial triangle and I think of two numbers that give me 54. Let's try 
And trust me, it, it definitely helps if you know your multiplication. It's going to be very difficult if you don't know your multiplication tables. Let's try 9 times 6. 9 times 6 gives me 54. Okay, let's break down the 9. Can I break down the 9? Uh, 1 times 9 or 3 times 3, and I cannot use 1. So I'm going to have to use 3 times 3. Now 6, what multiplied together gives me 6? I can say 1. Oh, wait a second. I can't use 1. So that's going to have to leave me with 2 times 3. I can't break down 2 and 3's. So this leaves me my what? My prime factorization. How do I write that as an answer? Well, I have a 3. And then I count how many 3's I have. 1, 2, 3. And I put that up in the corner. It's called an exponent. Times, and I have only 1, 2. So I put that up in the corner. And that's my answer. 3 to the 3rd times 2 to the 1st. If I multiply that out, 3 times 3 times 2 times 3, it would give me 54. That's how you know you're right. Multiply out your prime factorization and you will get it right. You should end up with your original number. Let's go ahead and try one more. Seventy-two. Let's break it down. What multiplied together gives me seventy-two? Let's see here. I could use this. I could use that. I could use, oh my gosh. I can't, one in seventy-two? Wait a second. I can't use one. Oh, I know. I'm going to use... 12, and 6. Can you think of other numbers that you could use? You could have used 8 and 9. Sure. You could use 2 and 36. That would have worked. Okay. Any number multiplied together that gives you 72, except for 1 in itself you can use. Let's break it down. Let's break down the 12. Can I break down the 12? Sure. I know that 4 times 3 equals 12. Let's put times there. I could use 6 times 2 also. My point is there's many options when doing prime factorization. What you're going to do is you're going to end up with the same exact number. 3 times 2 times 3 times 4. Well, 3 times 1, nothing else you multiplied together gives me 3. 2 times 1, nothing else multiplied together gives me 2. 3 times 1, nothing else gives me, multiplied together gives me 3. 4 times 1, or 2 times 2. Now, since I didn't break these down, I'm going to draw a line straight down and bring them down. And the reason being, put multiplication signs in between. I can't break it down anymore. Here is my prime factorization. So how do I write that? You remember? I have a 2, so I'm going to write a 2. How many 2's do I have? 1, 2, 3. Times, I have a 3. How many 3's do I have? 1, 2. And that's my answer to the prime factorization. Thank you for listening. Shoot me an email if you have any questions.